Ba Hashem, Abba Hawa, Yahweh Shua HaMashiach. Shabbat Shalom to my tribe. Shabbat Shalom to all the tribes. Shabbat Shalom to 432. Hell, what it do? Shabbat Shalom to all the family. How y'all feeling, man? I pull out car to wild. I want to get into the uh, wisdom of Solomon, fourteen and fifteen. Shabbat Shalom to all the indigenous Hebrews and all indigenous children of Shem that are hitting you over the head with some real speed. We want to get into wisdom of Solomon 14 and 15. And that, that uh, verse, the chapter really is really keen, but it, because the wisdom, the Shekinah, right, the Tiferet, is, is allowing us to understand our enemy, right, the enemy of Hawa. So... It's allowing us to understand how this white supremacy, okay? How this king established white supremacy through uh, your religious beliefs, through our religious beliefs. So it's beautiful. So we want to check out the wisdom of Solomon. And we got it over here too. I want you to see it for yourself though. So we'll get into that, we'll start on it. So it says, For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he had made an image of his child soon taken away, now honored him as a god, which was then a dead man, and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Okay, so these will be pagan ceremonies, pagan sacrifices. Remember we were made to bow down to this image, right? Because they created deities. Now who was that? For we know that was wrong. Okay, so Vespasian and Titus, after the Claudine, right? Julian Claudine, uh, dynasty along with Nero right so what we're talking about is going from your Byzantine right into your Constantine era and so this uh, Vespasian Titus you know uh, his son dying Vespasian and running through uh, running through the citadel, 
posing to be a Hamashiach. Okay? Posing to be a Hamashiach and end up killing himself and getting killed. Okay? Not being hung in the tree. See, this story of being hung in the tree is 2,000 years old. Right? The burial, the grave, they're hiding his grave. Uh, they're, um, I mean, this this Hamashiach, this reverence to this Hamashiach, right? Who rose again, his grave was being for 2,000 years, right? His grave was being watched for 2,000 years, right? Over in uh, Decapolis or Nicopolis. Um, what they're saying is 2,000 years, but if you look at United States, that has been over the Amaru Khans. How old is the United States that's been over the Amaru Khans? It's what? It's 2,000 years old. We're in 2019. So, the wisdom. So this Vespasian dies, right? So everybody can see, right? And so in this book, the Caesar's Messiah, right? The Caesar's Messiah, his invention to create a Roman Jesus, right? So this is the whitewashing the water down that the wisdom of Solomon has given to us. So that the people would deliver to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Okay. So yes, D, you guys got go go over to four three two and and, and go into go into ether and get that book because you guys got to check it out. It's real interesting because what they would do is create a duality of the Hamashiach that the Sakari um, was actually honoring. Okay, for the people, for the Judean people. Okay. Um, they were actually honoring um, not the death but the life. So um, and so this Vespasian and Titus created an image, okay, an image. After killing half of the Hebrew people, okay. So now in the time when the you know Romans come this is a um, um, a whitewash okay so we'll get down to the whitewash real quick but I'm gonna read this I want you guys to check out the scenery is beautiful the Amaru Khans is it is greatest we have to wow and I'll so for a father afflicted with untimely mourning when he hath made an image of his of his child soon taken away now now honored him as God which is then a dead man and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices Thus in process of time an ungodly custom, okay, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as law. It was kept as law. Engraving images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. Graving images. Okay. Whom men not could not honor in presence. Because they dwelt far off, they took the counterfeit of his visage from far and made an express image of a king whom they honored to the end, to the end that by this their forwardness they might flatter him that was absent as if he were present.
okay to honor this king right who you didn't see every day but a far away king this Roman king right right when when um when the Hamashiach and um Hawa right says that Hawa is king Hawa is the father so we talking about the Ruach will go into the spirit of the people Christ will go into the spirit of the people for what for what for what why would why would why would it go into the spirit of the people for you to gather right because we forget we've been through something called slavery in the mind and in the physical so it's for us to gather that's what the spirit coming into the flesh is about so the people will gather together again because that's true freedom to gather again right to prove yourselves to the wall to gather again and to come upon your enemy to reign upon your enemy like you have been reigned on like we have been reigned on So it says, also the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorance of more superstition. The artificer was this king, right? For we know in, in Matthew that the people tried to make Yahashua king, and he kept running off. Even the Romans put, you know, on his tombstone that he was king, but see the knowledge is from the Father. The wisdom is from the Father, Shekinah. So, I mean, That's why you have to sharpen your sword. For he, per adventure, willing to please one in authority. Okay? Because when you don't acknowledge the Most High as your king. Okay? And we acknowledge someone else as our king. Then, you know, as, especially as far as a king in authority. A king over a people willing to please one in authority so we'll force all our skills to make the resemblance of the best fashion so now we throwing up deities like trees deities of, of a king and we know Daniel uh uh who wasn't bowing to no deity And so the multitude of the Lord by grace of work took him now for God, which a little before was but honored. Okay? And so the multitude of the Lord by the grace of the work took him now for God, which a little before was but honored. Wasn't even honored because we never honored a king. And this was an occasion to deceive the world for men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribe unto stones and stocks of incommunicable 
name okay now we're talking about what we call Satan the church of Satan moreover this was not enough for them that they erred that they erred in the knowledge of God of Hawa but whereas they live in the great war of ignorance those so great plagues call peace right so what it means is that when there's plagues upon us, put on, upon us by our king right and now we don't even realize it because all we're doing is speaking about peace okay when our scriptures clearly tell us about the coming wars and the coming plagues and the coming prophesies and the coming prophecies so therefore that means that moreover this was not enough for them that they were erred in the knowledge of God that means that we didn't read or understand the knowledge of God that we listened to them but whereas they lived in a great war of ignorance those so great plagues they call peace because we didn't read about the prophecies for whilst they slew their children in sacrifices or used secret ceremonies or made reveling of strange rites new rites right like the seven laws of Noah right that the, the so called Jews the synagogue of Satan is presenting as law and so we bow to that or sign contracts to that because we're not receiving the Holy Spirit which is through the word all of it they kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled but either one slew another traitorously or grieved him by adultery so that means saying we know about the adultery part but saying that we were traitors to each other traitors so that there reigned in all men without exception blood blood manslaughter theft dissimulation corruption unfaithfulness tamils and perjury disquieting of good men forgetfulness of good terms defiling of souls changing of kind disorder in marriages adulterer and shameless uncleanness for the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning the cause and the end of all evil For either they are mad when they be merry, right, or prophesy lies, or live unjustly, or else lightly forswear themselves. For in so much as their trust is in idols which have no life, though they swear falsely, yet they look not to be hurt. They look not to be hurt. How be it for both causes shall be, shall they be justly punished, both because they know not well of Hawa, giving heed unto idols, and also unjustly swore in deceit, despising holiness. For it is not the power of them by whom they swear, but it is the just vengeance of sinners that punisheth always the offense of the ungodly but thou O God art gracious and true long suffering and in mercy ordering all things for if we sin we are thine knowing thy power 
but we will not sin knowing that we are counted thine. For to know thee is perfect, righteous. To know thy power is the root of immortality. So to know her walk, okay, is to know righteous. To know the seed is to know righteous, is the, to know thee is perfect. For if we sin, we are thine knowing thy power. But we will not sin, because we know our power. For neither did the mischievous invention of men deceive us. Okay? Now, this mischievous invention of men nor image spotted with divers colors the painter's fruitless labor okay we're talking about the white supremacy okay giving a people a god of a of a uh, melonless image a carbonless image when we know over and over in the scriptures the describe the describing of our creator the describing of his dragons his his angels the describing of the Hamashiach the describing of his people okay it's all bronze it's all copper So, for neither did the mischievous invention of men deceive us, nor an image spotted with divers colors, the painter's fruitless labor. So after this Vespasian died, they create deities. First it was statues, and then they created um, paintings. Okay? of a white God, a white Hamashiach, of a white pastor, a white preacher, you know, to then teach the people, okay, to nullify the action that will get your kingdom back. Okay, and nullifying the action. What action is that? To endure to the end. So the sight whereof entice it fools to lust after it. And so that they desire the form of a dead image. That has no breath. Instead of enduring. What does endure mean? That don't mean endure punishment of your enemy <laughs> no but since we mentioned that that means endure the punishment of my brother um, that is a law because we must unite so for us to see that we have to treat each other not as if we would treat our enemy so and when I say endure punishment I don't mean just let you know you know what I mean let somebody just whoop on you or, or mistreat you because it's laws to to overstanding um, the process that take place before you declare a brother not your brother or sister, not your sister. So, and it has to do with two or three witnesses. See, all that is keen in the law of loving my brother. So, the thing is, is the spirit 
the spirit of the Hamashiach, the spirit of Christ must come into all the people. Okay. So that you will gather, that you will gather for a while, you will gather and solidify your brotherhood because only a third will be solid and only in two thirds will be like Judas. You understand? So my brother, will you wash my feet? That's what it's about. My sister, will you wash my feet? To, to embody that total understanding. That's who I want. That's who I want. Big up, Design Lex. Twist up a lot for Zion Lex. But that's who I want on my side. The man that I know that wouldn't take a bribe to go against me. When I'm in righteous manner, when my fruits are right, when my fruits are righteous. And that's what it's about, man, understanding the totality and embodying it. The spirit of the Hamashiach will come into the flesh of all his children to gather. And only a third will make it. So, Baal Hashem, Abba Hawa, Yahushua Hamashiach. Time goes by when you're having fun. But uh, let's get into the drop. I hope all is well. And love a while. Because if you love a while, you will love yourself. And if you love yourself, then you'll love me. For we are brethren. For we are brethren. So big up to everybody that's not speaking of peace in a time of famine. But that's speaking of peace to his brother for his Baal Hashem at a time. Shabbat Shalom, Yeshua. Apollah Ka Tawal. Remember, rule number one justice for unification. We must unify, alright? We must tribe up. But check this out, man. This was hit over. I gotta hit you over the head with it because this was hit over my Enoch, alright? What are they talking about? As you can see, it has to do something with the Catholic Church again. With the Catholic Church again, and it's breaking news. Breaking news, man. Shabbat Shalom to the tribe. But this is breaking news. It says that the Vatican has now ruled the name of Hawaii. Has now ruled the name of Hawa cannot be used or pronounced during Catholic masses, during Catholic masses, in songs and prayers. Breaking news. What are they talking about? Let me hit you over the head with it, man. And uh, it's for you to ask Hawa for discernment, for us to ask Hawa for discernment. All right, so this article was from our mission. It is to spread good news of Yahusha, Mashiach, the only begotten son of Hawa, 
the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, so I'm with you on that. So what are they talking about? What are they talking about? Let's see. What are they talking about? It's saying beware of the Noahide laws. The Noahide laws. You ever heard of the Noahide laws? Me either. Me either. Because last time I checked, Noah followed the laws of Moshe. The laws of the Most High. So Noahide laws. What does that mean? It seemed like somebody has tried to uh, separate, take pieces out and to distribute to a mass of people. Let's see what they're talking about. And it speaks words against the Most High and it wears out the set apart ones of the Most High. And it intends to change appointed times, feast days and the law of Torah. And they are given into its hands for a time and times and a half a time in Daniel 7.25. So this is exactly what Daniel was saying in Daniel 7.25. And it speak words against the Most High and it wears out the set of part ones of the Most High. And it tends to change appointed times, feast days and the law of Torah all right and they are given into his hand for a time and a time and a half so this has something to do with what you call the Antichrist right the Antichrist all right let's check it out let's check it out most of us are quite aware of how the Roman Catholic Church has indeed instigated unrighteous changes to Hawa's Ten Commandments, marriage vows. They have also processed changes to his feast days, melting them into pagan so-called holidays. Okay? Nevertheless, were you aware of another group that has done the same thing? After careful study on reading Leviticus 23, one would discover that Hawa never tells anyone to keep a feast called Purim, Parim, or Shanaka, Hanukkah. Okay, well, I'm still reading on the so-called Hanukkah, but Parim, man, I don't agree with you on that because if you go to uh, the book of Esther, okay, if you go to the book of Esther, matter of fact, which we will do right here, if you go to the book of Esther, hold on one second, let's get there. Job. Okay. Pass it up a couple times, but that's okay. So if you get into the book of Esther, alright, something happened in Esther. That's when the raising up of uh, Mordecai. Mordecai was from the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, Benjamin. Okay. So Mordecai was Judah. Okay, and so, um, Mordecai, um, because of uh, an enemy name, an enemy named Haman, wanted Mordecai and all the Hebrew or Jewish people, all the Jews, the children of Judah, to be killed. Okay, to be annihilated. So if we get down to, let me see, hold on a second. We get into the book of Esther. You go to chapter 3. Now let's get over to chapter 3. Haman's plot against the Jews. Okay, the children of Judah. So you get down to chapter 8. I mean verse 8. Not yet. Yeah, chapter 3 and verse 8. You get down to chapter 3 and verse 8. And you'll see. Okay, and Haman said unto King Ahasuerus. Which is King uh, Xerxes, right? Xerxes. There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all the people, neither keep 
the king's laws neither do they keep the king's laws okay now because he was a, a Persian king so therefore um, all his committee and everybody was Persian so he's talking about these Persian laws neither do they keep the king's laws okay therefore it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them if it pleases the king let it be written that they may be destroyed and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have charge that have the charge of business to bring into the king's treasuries okay and the king took his ring from his hand and gave it into Haman and the son of uh, Hamadatha okay the son of Hamadatha of Persian origin okay Madatha the father of Ham okay Hamadatha okay Hamadatha Agai the Jews enemy okay Agagai the Jews enemy okay this is the enemy of the children of Judah all right and said the king said unto Haman the silver is given to thee the people also to do with them as they send it good to thee so he was allowing uh, he was allowing uh, our enemy to basically do whatever he wanted to do with us okay then the king's scribes called on the 13th day okay the first month and there was written according to all Haman had commanded to attend the king's lieutenants and to do uh, the governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province according to written thereof and to every people after their language in the name of the king Ahasuerus it was written and sealed with the king's ring okay with a signet ring okay and the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy to kill and to cause to perish all Jews both young and old little children and women in one day and upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month which is the month of Adar okay the twelfth month would be March alright if April is the first month then the twelfth month so this this will be March the thirteenth month of March which is the month of Adar Adar and to take spoil of them for a prey okay the copy of writing for a commandment for a commandment to be given in every province all right a copy a copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province okay to be given in every province was published into all the people that should be ready against that day okay so so this is for all the people living around the children of Judah right all the enemies to to for them to gather up and to come and basically disintegrate our people okay so so if you go up to seven we started at eight right now on that day so they went into writ is what was called a per all right i'll show you Okay, in the first month, all right, April, that is the month of Nisan. And remember, we talked about that in the video, month of Nisan versus the month of Abib. Okay, so somewhere it changed, somebody changed it, and we'll see. We have to look further into why of the changing, okay. In the month of Nisan, but which is the month of Abib, right. In the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, okay, the cast they cast per all right parin parin okay a lot they cast a lot now as means by a broken piece as by means of a broken piece a broken piece okay so they cast parin all right when it say peace i'm thinking it's talking about shalom a broken shalom okay so now per they cast Purim, that is the lot, okay? Okay, that is the lot before Hammond to determine, to determine the day and the month until it fell on the 12th month, which is the month of Adur, okay? Then Hammond said to King Ahasuerus, 
there is a certain people scattered abroad, um, scattered and dispersed. So therefore, on the first month of Abid, okay, and it took them a, a whole 12 months or uh, 11 months, so 12 months. So by the time of March, okay, the end of the year, they had went into a decree, okay. They had went into a decree, all right. Letters were sent out to couriers to kill and annihilate everyone in Judah, right. So, that's where, okay, now they sent out a parim, okay, they cast lots, okay, on the children of Judah, they cast lots on you, they cast lots on us, right, so now, that comes in Esther, okay, so we'll get into the book of Esther, but what we get into is the fact that during the king Ahasuerus, right, they're under this Persian domination. So they're drinking plenty of wine, not worshiping, not observing the Sabbath. And, um, but Mordecai um, has a plan to get Esther into, like I said, Mordecai was from the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, Mordecai had to get Esther into, um, uh, into, basically into the, uh, the palace to be a queen okay to be a queen of King Ahaz okay so she ended up being a, a queen of Ahaz a wife of Ahaz in return Mordecai got to be a uh, be a uh, not a common but be a, be a um, an advisor to King Ahaz right and, may, and he became high over all the officials. Okay, so therefore, and that reverse, and in return, that reverse, what happened in chapter uh, chapter three, verse seven, right? That reverse, what happened in chapter, in chapter three, verse twelve. Then the king's scribes were called on the thirteenth day, April thirteenth. All right. Alright, so you go down to 12 and you'll see that reverse what happened in 12. So as you know what happened in 12, then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day of the first month. 13th day of the first month, which is April. Alright, and um, hold up, I'm, I'm going backwards. The first, were the first um, were the king scribes called on the 13th day of the first month right which is April and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writings thereof okay and to every people after their language in the name of the king Ahasuerus, it was written and sealed with the king's ring. Okay. All right. These were posted into all the king's province to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all the Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day. And uh, even, okay, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is in March. Okay which is the month of Adar and to take the spoil of them for prey all right so 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 in their return of that decree all right so in that return of that pure or what you call a purim or what you call a purge right a purge right so what they wanted to do, so what we had to do is counter that purge, okay? Because if you go down to, um, if we go down, if we go down to chapter 8 in, in Esther, right? We go down to chapter 8, but not only that, not only that, let's go to 6, right? 
let's go to six because this is the reason why Mordecai was brought up into high ranks okay because Mordecai had asked Esther to speak out because once Mordecai got her to go to the palace so the king could see her he wanted her to speak out before they amended this before they this decree went into effect so in chapter 4 um, in chapter 4 okay because the article is going to bring this up also in chapter 4 to, uh, 4 it says Esther agrees to help the Jews okay when Mordecai perceived all that was done Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry and came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth and in every province whatsoever the king's commandment and his decree came there was a great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes okay so Esther maids um, so Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told her um, that was the queen then was the queen exceedingly grieved and she sent raiment and cloth to Mordecai to uh, take away his sackcloth from him but he didn't want it okay then he called to Esther for uh, the king's chamberlain who had been appointed upon her he, to send for Esther okay and uh, he commanded to Mordecai um, chamberlains whom he had appointed to attend uh, upon her and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why so Hashas went forth to Mordecai upon the street Mordecai told him of all that had happened to him okay and of the sum of the money that uh, Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasury for the Jews to uh, to be destroyed okay also he gave him a copy of the writing of the decree that was given to at Shushan okay at the citadel to destroy them to to show it unto Esther and declare unto her and to charge her that she should go into the king to make supplication unto him and make requests before okay him for for her people which were the children of Judah okay so he came and told Esther the words of Mordecai and again Esther spoke and gave him a commandment unto Mordecai all the king's servants and all the king people of the king province do know that whosoever whether man or woman shall come she was trying to just basically say that I can't go to the king and ask him because either he gonna put me to death or he'll, he'll he'll or I'll be hurt so he was like look man okay so he'll so he was like look man and we'll get to this part Okay, so Mordecai said to her, look, because she was scared to go to the king, right? So Mordecai said, he commanded to answer, he said, look, think not with thyself, okay? Think not of yourself that thou shalt escape in the king's house for more than all the Jews, okay? For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to Jews from another place, okay but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this okay so he basically tell her look this is what you come into the kingdom for okay you being able to go to this man and being able to maybe become you know become this man concubine and his wife and he'll spare and you get him to do a favor and spare us because this dude Hammond is about to um who is also in in king ahaz favor is also about to also put out a decree to destroy all the hebrews all right to store all the jews the children of judah right so that's where i wanted to get to um when you get down to chapter six right you get down to chapter six you get down to chapter six this is where the king honors Mordecai okay the king honors Mordecai okay and um and that's because he went through the records on that night 
could not the king sleep and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles of chronicles and they were read before the king okay and it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bithana and Teresh two of the king's chamberlains the keepers of the door who sought to lay hand on the king at Hazarus okay they had sought to kill him and rob him so Mordecai had basically went and gave word to the king okay and so that's how he honored Mordecai in the future for that and the king said what honor and dignity have been done to Mordecai for this then said the king's servant and ministered unto him there is nothing that has been done for him so the king said who in the court now Haman has come all right so so Haman had went in the court and talked to the king Ahaz but tried to get some you know uh, some cool points but he told him to basically go praise Mordecai in the center of the citadel in front of everybody and put him on royal clothes okay and so that's what changed the chain of events of this perm of us being um, of us being annihilated annihilated to um, us reversing right so actually uh, us reversing this perm so it's very important because we have a part to play in this perm because if we don't then the next uh then will be destroyed by this secret pearl okay so it's things that we must do in one that is to gather and unify all right unify in the name of the hamashiach all right so and i'm gonna show you and i'm gonna show you hold on one second Shilaki. So let's get back into the article. So it says most of us are quite aware of how the Roman Catholic Church has instigated unrighteous changes to Hawa's Ten Commandments, marriage vows. They have also processed changes to his feast days, melting them to pagan so-called holidays. Nevertheless, nevertheless, were you aware of another group? that has done the same thing after carefully the study of reading Leviticus chapter 23 one will discover that Hawa never tells anyone to keep a feast called Parim alright or either Chanukah or Hanukkah alright ever heard of the Noahide Noahide laws talk has been going around that these are harmless hey they were even given to Noah, right? That's what they say on the contrary. Such claims, they are extremely dangerous to everyone. Do not be destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Okay? And that's in Hosea 4 and 6. Do not be destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now, say hello to the seven universal laws of men as listed by the Tammuz. Alright, this is in Sa Sahedrin, in the Sahedrin 56a. So the prohibit there are seven pro prohibitions. Okay, prohibition to idolatry, murder, theft, sexual promiscuity, blasphemy, cruelty to animals, cruelty to animals. Okay, requirement to have just laws. You shall set up an effective judiciary to enforce the preceding six laws fairly. Now, now in the Tammuz, they're telling them to set up to set up uh, an effective judiciary to enforce okay the preceding law six laws fairly now what's it going to bring in now we're talking about a Sanhedrin okay just like you see here in the Sanhedrin okay so let's get into it what is the Sanhedrin let's get into it these laws along with those who promote them are telling people there are two sets of laws one for the children of Judah one for the Jews, all right, and the other for the Gentiles, which they call Goyim, all right. So now, but what about the synagogue of Satan? 
Okay, the synagogue of Satan is actually who is telling you this. Alright. The synagogue of Satan is actually who's telling you this. Alright. These laws, along with those who promote them, are telling the people that there are two sets of laws. One for the Jews, which who they claim to be, and the others for the Gentile. That's everybody else, right? We know this is not scriptural, okay? Because we are told there is one Torah, all right? There is one Torah like there is one gospel for the native born and for the stranger who sojourns among you, all right? And that's in Exodus 12, 49. If you go to Exodus, you'll see it. There is one Torah for the native born and for the stranger who sojourns among you, okay? Now, what does that mean? That means whoever circumcised, whoever is adheres to the circumcision, okay, of the Most High, all right, Exodus 12, 49, the Torah is for you, all right. This is the reason, this is the reason the Noahide laws are dangerous, okay. These laws are growing at an alarming rate. Alright, you see, to the average Christian, they are saved by grace and not of works. Whereas, other believe the Jews have the law and are in no need of a savior. The following, okay, appeared in uh, Half San Antonio Fundamentalist Battles Anti-Semitism Houston Chronicle, April 30th, 1988. Alright, now. Let's talk about this. This is what we want to highlight right here. Because this both is blasphemy. Alright. This is the problem with us today. The separation. Alright. This is both. This is blasphemy. Alright. The Torah is. There is only one Torah. There was only one gospel. Alright. Given to the native born and to the stranger who so joins among you in righteous manner. Okay. So, this highlight says, this is the reason the Noah High laws are dangerous. These laws are growing at an alarming rate. You see, to the average Christian, they are saved by grace and not by works. Whereas, others believe the Jews, others believe the Jews have the law and are in no need of a savior. Okay? So now, this is two oxymorons and this is two things that are not true. And if you believe in any of those things, you are not of the Father. We are not of the Father. And I'll tell you why. Let's get into the first one. You see the average Christian say they are saved by grace and not of works. Um, let's go to James. Pull out your sword. And I'll tell you how that's false. So we don't get caught up into these this antichrist. This antichrist, right? Let's go into or, or we don't get caught up in this transgression. Okay, so let's go to uh James. Now I'm going to James for a reason. I think all of you know why we going to James, because as you say, right? You say that James is the New Testament. So I'm show you even in the New Testament, right? Even in the New Testament, I'll show you what you have been taught is not true at all. So now you've been taught that by grace, not by works, by faith, not by works. It's deeper than just mud pies, though, right? All right, so where are we going with it? Oh, I think we go to James. Let me see. So first we'll go. First we'll go to James, uh, chapter one. All right, verse twelve. I think that'll be a good start. Go to James chapter one and verse twelve. Where it talks about the testing of your faith. Okay. So it says in 12. Blessed Baruch is the man that endureth temptation. 
For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Okay? So what does that mean? What does that mean when uh, we talk about endureth temptation? Alright, that means the transgression of the law. Okay? For only it is to sin is to transgress the law. Okay? And through the Holy Spirit, you have the ability to not transgress the law through. That's why he said bless. Bless is the Holy Spirit. Bless. Baruch. Baruch is the Holy Spirit. Okay? The Ruach. The Ruach. Baruach. The Baruch is the Holy Spirit. Bless is the man that endureth temptation. Okay? So what are you talking about when he talks about enduring temptation? Okay? So we'll get down we'll get down to um, 17 chapter 2 and 17 chapter 2 and 17 where it talks about the sin of polarity all right 2 and 17 Where you see faith without works is dead. Okay? Faith without works is dead. Alright? Because it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Faith, allowing the Holy Spirit, allowing you to be blessed, allowing the Ruach, uh, permits you from transgressing the law. In order to follow the law, you must what? Not transgress. Right? Alright? Have works. You must have works, right? So, what do it profit, my brethren, through a man say he have faith and have no works? Okay? And he have no works. Can faith save him? Okay? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, alright? And one of you say unto him, depart in peace. Or God bless you. Be ye warned and filled notwithstanding. Ye give them not those things. Which are needful. To the body. What do it profit? Okay so even so faith. If have no works. Is dead being alone. Okay. Alright. It's dead being alone. Okay, so that basically takes away the highlighted area that we have where it says, you see the average Christian, they say they are saved by grace and not of works. Okay, now whereas others believe that Jews, the Jews have the law and are in no need of a savior. Oh man. Alright, so I tell you where we go in a second. Yeah, and that second is right now. Now we could hit you with the um Isaiah fifty three, but let's just go to Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah. Alright, let's go to Zechariah now, which now what you would say is a so called old testament, right? But I'll show you in Zechariah. Now this is this one complete book of the Torah, the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. This is the or the Gospels. You got it's it's all together. So the point is that the fact that someone is trying to separate your culture, separate your God, separate your faith from your works, man. And that's the only way there. Your faith and your works. So the spirit of the Hamashiach must come into all all of Israel, all of Judah, you understand, so that we are able to unite, man, all right, we are able to unite, so let's check out Zechariah, all right, Zechariah is what you would call the Old Testament, right, so let's go to chapter 2 in Zechariah, a vision of a man with the measuring line, okay, so when we end chapter 2, let's go to verse 10. Now, verse 10 says, It 
Sing and rejoice, O daughters of Zion. Right? That's you. Right? That's you, right? O daughters of Zion, my Hebrew people, right? Zion, right? For lo, I come and I will dwell in the midst of thee, said Hawa. All right? For lo, I come and I dwell in the midst of thee, said Hawa. And many nations shall be joined to Hawa in that day and shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that Hawa of hosts hath sent me unto thee. Alright? So he said, I will come and dwell into thy people, and you should know that Hawa hath sent me, right? And Hawa shall inherit Judah his portion in the Holy Land. Alright? And Hawa shall inherit Judah his portion in the Holy Land. Alright? And shall choose Yaharusalem again. Be silent, O Lord, flesh. Be silent, O all flesh, before Hawa, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Okay, so. So, when you get down to three, a vision of Joshua, the high priest, all right? And with the same as you call Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus Christ, the high priest, Joshua, the high priest, it's the same thing. Kesakota, it's the same thing. Alright? And he showed me, Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Okay? Okay, so you got Joshua standing before the Lord and Satan at his right hand to resist him. Okay, and Hawa said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even Hawa that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua, how is sure? Okay, Yahusha was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel, the dragoon. And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee. I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Okay, and we're not talking about clothes. Okay, we're talking about the garments of skin. Okay, because he was given the uh, corruptible flesh. Now he has the incorruptible flesh. All right, the Ruach, what gives every man, Israel and Judah, incorruptible flesh from the Holy Spirit. And I said, let them set a fair mitre upon his head. Okay. And that's, that's three and five. That's three and five. So, a, a, a mitre is a turban. So, a fair means just clean. So, when you say we are fair, that means we're clean. Not the color. Fair skins just mean we are clean. So, a clean turban on his head. So, they put a clean turban on his head. This is the same thing that was put on Aaron, high priest, right? They put a turban on his head. Okay. And they put clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua saying. Okay. Thus said the Lord who walk. If thou will walk in my ways. And if thou will keep my charge. Then thou shalt also judge my house and shall also keep my courts and I will give thee places to walk among thee that stand by hear now O Joshua the high priest thou and thy fellows that sit before thee for they are men wandered at for behold I will bring forth my servant 
the branch for behold for behold the stone that I laid before Joshua okay upon one stone shall even be seven eyes behold I will engrave the graving thereof said the Lord of hosts and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day in that day said the Lord Hawa shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree okay so like he said in chapter 3 then he showed me Yahusha Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of Hawa and standing at his right hand and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him then Hawa rebuked Satan and the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you it is not a brand plucked from the fire now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel alright alright so he took away the iniquity and he clothed them in rich clothes alright so those of you know what that means okay that his incorruptible his corruptible life was was taken and his incorruptible life was given so therefore that's a sign for us to do the same thing alright meaning that within each other that we must unify so therefore that we are able to be Christ like you understand we won't be we won't fault each other that's the whole the whole thing of the Torah of the Gospels is for us to uh, to become Christ and to unify the seed to acknowledge the seed and have faith in that so we have faith in that in the seed have faith in that have faith in the Son, then we can understand we can be like that through the Holy Spirit. You understand? Have faith in Christ through the Holy Spirit. Have faith in the Hamashiach through the Holy Spirit. Have faith in Hawa through the Holy Spirit. Have faith in yourself through the Holy Spirit. Have faith in your brother through the Holy Spirit, through the Ruach, Kadesh. Alright? And that's what it gets you there. There where? to the laws man that's what it is is about the laws is just putting a pretty name on it alright acknowledge the seed acknowledge the seed alright so let's finish the article so now we covered the highlighted area we covered about grace and not works and we cover the fact that others believe the Jews uh, have the law and are in no need of a savior. Zechariah 2 and 10 clearly stays different from that. And Isaiah 53 and all over. Alright. Proverbs. Um, Psalms. All over. Alright. Alright. So this guy John Hagi, fundamentalist pastor from San Antonio and friend of Israel he also believes that Jews can come to God without going through Christ the Hamashiach trying to convert Jews is a waste of time so it really don't make sense because you gotta understand that how can you learn to love man the royal principles the royal principles of the law we talking about a brotherhood man so how can the 144 unite alright so you gotta understand you have to you have to understand internally all right esoterically okay so the Jewish person who has has his roots in Judaism see that's a difference a Jewish person has his roots in Judaism that's an ism man we don't deal with isms okay it's not going to convert to Christianity ism all right because that's what was just up here when you say that you know when you don't understand internally you must as a Christian as a Hebrew Israelite understand internally because it is very detrimental you must understand the Creator alright for the spirit the spirit of the Hamashiach will come into all of Hawa's children 
Man, is that beautiful. That's what grace we talking about, man. By you having the faith. And by the Ruach, by the Holy Spirit, it won't permit you to transgress in the law. So that's what we're talking about for the Hebrew people and, and, and that beautiful, that beautiful orchestration of, of, of knowing our creator. All right, so we could skip over that because it really don't make sense. Uh, but it says that the Jewish people who has its roots in Judaism is not going to convert to Christianity. There is no form of Christian evangelist that has failed so miserably as evangelists. The Jewish people, they already have a faith structure. Everyone else, whether Buddha or the needs to believe in Jesus, he says, but not the Jewish people. Now, we're not talking about the children of Judah, are we? No, we're not. We're talking about the synagogue of Satan. For the synagogue of Satan will be destroyed. So therefore, no, they don't have to believe in the Hamashiach. All right. They don't have to understand it internally of their Hamashiach. For every Naga has a dragoon. All right. Jews already have a covenant with Hawa that has never been replaced by Christianity. All right, man. It don't make no sense. That's why he said it. All right, the Noahide laws are growing in popularity. They have been reached. Uh, they have even reached the U.S. Congress now. All right, the U.S. Congress officially recognized the Noahide laws and legislation. All right, now this is where we get into. All right, now we got to do some real uh, research and bobbing and weaving because now it's, okay, the U.S. Congress, United States Congress, officially recognized the Noahide laws and legislation that has passed by both houses okay congress and the president of united states george bush indicated in public law 102-14 102nd congress okay 102nd congress that the united states of america was founded upon the seven universal laws of noah and that these laws have been the bedrock of society and the dawn of civilization they also acknowledge that the seven laws of Noah are, are the fun foundation upon which civilization stands. And that recent weakening of these principles threatened the fabric of civilized society. And that justified preoccupation in, the education, in, education, in educating the citizens of the U.S. of America and future generations is needed. For this purpose, this public law designated March 26 1991 as education day okay so now as we can rewind a little bit into what we just read all right so this is a, a law a noahide law in legislation that was passed by both houses congress and the president of the united states george bush indicated in public law 102-14 102nd one of the 102nd congress that the United States of America was founded upon the seven universal laws of Noah's. All right, and these laws have been the bedrock of society from the dawn of civilization. All right, from the dawn of civilization. All right, now does that mean um, these laws from the dawn of civilization is that colonization? They also acknowledge that the seven laws of Noah are, found, are the foundation upon which civilization stands. All right, colonization stands in that recent weakening in these principles threaten the fabric of uh, civilized society. Okay, so they call it Education Day on March 25th, 1991. Well, isn't that just sneaky? And here we thought the United States was founded on the top 10, right? The Ten Commandments, right? Oops, guess we're, we were wrong, huh? Sadly, this is not just... For the state of Israel, when you say Israel, you know that means Judah, Judah, and Israel, or even the United States, but the whole world. All right, because you, Judah and Israel is scattered around the whole world. This obligation to teach all the peoples of the earth about the laws of Noah is incumbent upon every individual in every area. This is the Mishnah Torah, Law of Kings, in 810. Okay. Law of Kings in 810. All right. So, do you want to live in Israel? All right. If so, 
Are you prepared to sign forms giving your allegiance to these counterfeit Ten Commandments, which they say are the seven laws of Noah? Okay, so Wikipedia even has an uh, instrument about the seven laws of Noah. Okay. Alright, the seven laws of Noah, which is crazy. As you can see, seven laws of Noah. Alright, but let's get back to our topic. Alright, in January 2004, the spiritual leader of the Druze Committee in Israel, Sheikh Mowafak Tariq, signed a declaration calling on all non-Jews in Israel to observe, alright, the Noahide laws. Non-Israel, alright, so I guess you would consider these as the Palestinians, right? To observe the Noahide laws is laid down in the Hebrew Bible and expounded upon in the Jewish tradition. Okay, the mayor, okay, the mayor of, of the Galilean city of Shepha, Amir, all right, Shepharam, where Muslim, Christian, and Druze community live, all right, Druze, Druze community live side by side, also signed the document, all right, so people actually signed this document, all right, the declaration includes the commitment to make a better, more humane world based on the seven Noahide commandments and the values they represent commanded by the creator to all mankind through Moses on Mount Sinai all right wow support for the for the spread of the seven Noahide commandments by the Druze leader reflects the biblical narrative itself the Druze community reverses the non-Jewish father-in-law of Moses Jephro whom Arabs call Shaib According to the biblical narrative, Jephro joined, all right, joined, remember Jephro was the Median priest, right? He joined and assisted the Jewish people in the desert during the exodus, accepted monotheism, but ultimately rejoined his own people. In fact, the tomb of Jephro in Tiberias is most important religious, religious site in the Jews community. Okay, so y'all check into that. But uh, as the article says, uh, as we can see, these laws do not say anything about the Sabbath. Okay, when reading the following, tears fell from my eyes. Okay, remember, beloved friends, Israel, all right, Judah, the ones that the dragon will wage war with will be those that follow Revelations 4 and 12. All right. And we know about the Revelations 4 and 12, right? 14 and 12, let's go to it. Alright, Revelations 14, you talk about the Lamb and the 144,000, okay? So when you get down uh the message of the three angels when you get down to 14 and 12 what the article is talking about let's just go to it it says here is the patience of the saints okay the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god of hawa and the faith of the hamashiach the faith of christ of the hamashiach all right the faith of Yahusha, the Hamashiach. Alright, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, okay, right, bless him. Alright, so understand that. So now, so now, when you talk about the dragon slain, trying to slay that of the Hamashiach, Gentiles may not be taught the Torah in so much as the Jews had their own distinct jurisdiction, it would have been unwise to reveal their laws to the Gentiles, for such knowledge might have been operated against the Jews in their opponents' courts. Okay? So that's just like you saying you couldn't read the Bible. Alright? Is what you what you remember in, in your in our history is the fact that you couldn't read the Bible. Okay, it's the same thing as these so called Jews not allowing so-called gentiles but who's really israel read the bible okay so 
Hence the Tammuz prohibited the teaching to a Gentile of the Torah. Alright, so and you can remember you're being denied from the priesthood. Y'all can check the drops about that. All the way for 126 years, all the way to what? 1978, 79. Same thing, right? Supremacy, right? Alright. The inheritance. The inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. Deuteronomy. 33 and 4. Yohanan says, Yohanan, Yohanan says, of one such teaching, such a person deserved death. An idiom used to express indignation. Alright? It is like placing an obstacle before the blind. This is in Sanhedrin 59a and 13a. Yet, if a Gentile studies the law for the purposes of observing the moral laws of Noah, says he is good as high as a high priest so that's where they just throwing you our people off course okay they're completely throwing our people off course and they're also throwing uh everybody outside of the kingdom off course to create this uh antichrist and to also create an army against you israel and judah all right and they're also trying to create israel against judah again okay understand that now, what does that mean in, in, in so many terms? In layman's terms. In layman's terms for those who don't adhere to the to the Torah or the Bible or the scriptures. Alright. In layman's terms, what that's saying, they're trying to turn the Al the um uh, the Algonquian Indians, alright, against the Oroquius Indians. That's what they're doing. Regardless of anything or anything that anybody tells you, again, that's what they're basically trying to do. For the American Naga. For you to understand. That's exactly what's trying to happen. They're trying to turn the Agonquian Indians. Against the Oroquian Indians. They're trying to turn the Shawnee Indians. Against the what? Against the. Um, the Narraganza Indians. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Against the Hopis. The Shawnee against the Hopi. You understand? So that's what's basically trying to happen. They're trying to change the Choctaw. Against the Seminole, okay, the Cherokee against the Crete, all right, so, so it says that Gentiles studied the law for the purpose of observing the moral laws of Noah, okay, says, then it says that he is good, okay, and these are all quotes from your enemy, so we must bob and weed, ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. Leviticus. Alright, that's in Leviticus 23 and 5. The text does not specify an Israelite or a Levite or a priest, but simply a man, even a Gentile. Okay? Resh, Laish said, a Gentile observing the Sabbath observe, deserves death. That's in the Sanhedrin. Okay, 58. But do we adhere to the Sanhedrin? Okay? This refers to even a Gentile, okay, said a Gentile observing the Sabbath deserves death, okay? Sanhedrin 58b, this refers to a, what? Um, this refers to a Gentile who accepted the seven laws of Noah. You have to actually sign the contract, okay, in the so-called land of Israel, right? The Palestinians had to sign and Palestinians, so-called Palestinians. Okay, so when you get to the, the um, that means all people, man. That means all the people over there. So even you're going to touch the Israelites, the true Israelites that are over there also. And so much as the Sabbath is a sign between God and Israel alone. Okay, I think they meant to say in Judah alone. I mean, this is what the, the enemy is trying to say. And it was probably directed against the Christian Jews who desecrated, who dis disregarded the Mosaic laws and yet at a time kept up the observance of the Jewish Sabbath. All right. That's why I'm glad we had a, a Jewish rabbi even tell you in the last video, if you check the last drop out, when it talks about the Hamashiach, when it talked about Jesus Christ, when it talked about Yahusha, Hamashiach. All right. What did it talk about? He talked about how he observed the Sabbath. And when you get in the, in the, in the um, so-called uh, King James Version, what are we talking about? He's doing all type of healing on the Sabbath. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to heal. You're supposed to do Hawal's work 
on the Sabbath. And that's what exactly happened. So, man, you got to bob and weave the naysayers so you can get the total esoteric meaning of your ruach, of your root. This is your root, my my Hebrew people, my Abara people. You know what I'm saying? This is this is your this is your root. This is your root. Understand? Don't let no one take your root cuz he going to put a root on you. All right? So, so, so the article says, before I go, he must uh, interrupt and say that the scriptures are very clear. There is only one Torah. There is only one Gospels. Okay? There is only one Gospels that was taught to us in the wilderness and outside of the wilderness. For both the nation. Alright, born. Remember Paul. Paul wasn't even around when the Hamashiach was around. Okay? And the witness and Paul became witness and he was part of the Pharisees, right? He was part of the Pharisees, the one who protested the Hamashiach and killed in the name. But you understand, man, it's part of the law. This was something that was written in the Holy Spirit before time. And that's what we must understand. So we must bob and weave the naysayers and get to the true Ruach of your, of your people. Of you call that's running the wave of this indigenous, this autochthonous, this, um, this, uh, this Anasazi people. Okay, this uh, this Pueblo people, this Hohokan, this this Toltec, this Mayan, this Aztec, the Olmec, the, um, these people. All right, so you gotta understand that these Inca people, these these uh, Peruvian people, all these people from the Americas. You have to understand. All right, so so we must interrupt and say that scriptures are very clear. There is only one Torah for both the native-born and the strangers. No one is righteous, okay? We all are sinners. The seven-day Sabbath was made Kadesh. Kadesh at the beginning, all right? Genesis 2 and 3, and we covered that in the last drop, so check that out. The seven-day Sabbath is not just for the children of Judah, but it's for the children of Israel. It's for all the world. It's for the sojourners, okay? But it's a sign that, that binds believers to the Creator of heaven and earth all right of heaven and earth 